we are for another session of Off the Grid. And our next guest is an MC based out of the West Coast, a true wordsmith in every sense of the word, and she's indeed setting the game on fire. Hey, welcome to West Coast MC, Rhyme Style Troop. What's going on? How you doing? Peace, peace. Yo, what up, what up? Rhyme Style Troop, MDR, South Bay, Imperial Beach, San Diego. Hell yeah. Well, hey, good, man. Can you start with telling us a little bit about yourself, where exactly in Cali you call home, and just tell us how long you've been making music? Yeah, man. Well, home it, for me is San Diego, South Bay, California, uh, Imperial Beach. So I was uh, born and raised here in SD. I grew up in Imperial Beach, um, the most ghetto beach here, <laughs> but it's my favorite beach. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, man. So West Coast is what I represent. MDR is what I represent. That's my crew. Um, and yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I've been following you for a minute and I, and I love everything that you're putting out. And so how, how long have you been doing music now? Since I was 13 years old, I'm 28. Oh, <laughs> oh man, for a long time. Well, dope. I know that Gangstar has been uh, probably on the top of your list in terms of musical influences, but um, are there any other uh, rap artists that, that kind of just uh, hit the top of your playlist? Yeah, man, Mob Deep. Yep. Sean Price. Yeah. Who, who Camp Click? MF Doom. Um, yeah. I mean, Black Dot. Fuck, Capone and Noriega. I mean, I, I, yeah. I listen more to East Coast yeah. than I do West Coast just because uh, I resonate more with that vibe. Yeah, I could tell in, 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 the, in the delivery that you, that you have. It's definitely leaning towards the East Coast style of hip-hop. It's really dope, really good choices that you mentioned. Are there any particular albums from those folks that, that really uh, just hit, hit high rotation on your players? Yeah, uh, Daily Operation, Gangstar, yep. Monkey Bar, Sean Price, yep. um, mm, Food, MF Doom. Uh, let's see, who else did I mention? Oh, yeah, with Mob Deep, uh, Infamous. Yeah, man, just like fucking, yeah. for me. I, yeah, but you know, put hip hop aside, I listen to all types of music, man. I listen, yeah. to, Sade, I listen to Sade, you know, yep. I listen to some Black Sabbath, I listen to uh, some uh, Metallica, you know, like today I was on more rock and roll tip and shit, you know, yeah. and uh, listen to R&B, Aaliyah, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just some music in general, you know, hip hop, I love hip hop, obviously, right? Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't end or stop there. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you need a little break from it too, right? And just get a little uh, taste of all, all different genres. So that's awesome. And I'm glad that uh, your taste is very versatile. Now, you mentioned that, you know, you get a delivery that is very similar to East Coast uh, style of rapping. Well, what about the production of beats? Do you, do you like the East Coast sound or do you have a preference? Who are some of your favorite uh, producers? DJ Premier, Large all Professor. Day. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ninth Wonder, Apollo Brown. Okay. <laughs> That's peace, a good one too. Peace, peace to Apollo Brown, yeah, for sure. And then <laughs> um, the Dead Poets Society just worked with them. Yeah, uh, they're uh, collective based uh, based in uh, Philadelphia, and um, we just came out with our album, The Heart of the City. Yeah. Um, gotta shout out my boys, Snow Goons, Goons Gear, uh, Goons Music. Um, yeah. So production, I mean. Yeah, pretty much Primo, all Primo's production. You know, it's crazy when I heard that Primo produced one of uh, Christina Aguilera's famous songs. And I, was like, <laughs> I had no clue. Oh, yeah, he mentioned it in an interview, and I was like, yeah, that's that's the level of uh, universal that I want to be on, you know, like, yeah. is, is in that level, you know. Um, hip hop, I mean, like I said, it's just the beginning, and then from there you just build on the culture and expand the brand. Yeah, and that's a good point because I, I watched a video that you were a guest on and it was a rock video, right? It was with Papa Roach. And so they had you rhyming on, on, on rock music, which I thought was super dope, which uh, displayed your versatility in, in terms of uh, being able to rhyme in whatever beat, right? Just being a, a true MC and being able to rhyme whatever book, whatever beat they uh, hand over to you. So that's pretty dope. Do you want, you want to talk to me about that video, how that came about? Yeah, so um, uh, shout out my boy, Jason Rockman. 
uh, from Slaves on Dope. And Slaves on Dope was the first band that was signed uh, under uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And uh, he reached out to me a couple, what was it? How long has it been? Like two and a half years or something? He's seen a video that I had posted. I had uh, did a... I had rapped over a Zarface beat oh, and great. he, and he follows esoteric and esoteric reposted that video on his story. Oh. And then he's like, who's this chick? And then he followed me. And then uh, from there we started building a rapport and um, he hit me up like, Hey, you know, uh, what do you feel about getting on a track with these cats? And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, no, that was, was like a who's who. That was crazy. I was like, quote unquote, the most uh, unknown person there. You know what I mean? So it was cool to get my name out there, just, you know, representing who I am and my style on that type of uh, platform and format. I mean, it's so cool to get out of my comfort zone and tap into different genres. And that's what I get excited about with music is um, yeah. fusing in the different genres and fucking around and finding out. <laughs> and that was a... Uh, it was definitely a, a championship moment in my career, you know, like, like <laughs> yeah. did I, I just worked with Papa Roach, Five Finger <laughs> Dead Punch, uh, yeah. DJ Lore from Public Enemy, like, I know, what? Oh, <laughs> I already have that on my resume, son, and I didn't pay for that shit. I didn't pay for no futures, homie. <laughs> no, I, I was really impressed just that, uh, yeah, you being able to do that. And then you mentioned that too, which kind of surprised me when I saw your reflection video. So you yeah. did that, which was a dope, dope song, but um, you flexed a little bit of your singing ability too. So I was like, dude, she, she's mad versatile. And I, and I appreciate that in MCs who can do that and don't get stuck on just simply rapping. Yeah, uh, singing, uh, well, for me, what came first was dancing when I was a kid, right? I wanted to be a B-girl. Oh. <laughs> But due oh. to uh, due to the taco intake here in San Diego and, <laughs> and, the, and the carne asada fries, oh, and the <laughs> and way, <laughs> hey, let it be known, San Diego has the best Mexican food, hands down. Yo. Sorry, LA, not LA. San Diego has the best Mexican food, hands down. All right. <laughs> Yo, I I agree. I spend a lot of time in Chula Vista with some of the friends. Uh, that I had from high school, and uh, oh man, they oh, would take me to, oh Jesus, the carne asada fries and roll tacos. Oh man, they just, yeah, man, cats are still catching up. And then you got like the ketchup bottles of the sauce, right? I was like, God damn, that's it. Oh man, I, I love San Diego Mexican food for real. Yes. Yeah, so, oh yeah, you said the ketchup bottles with the hot sauce. Hey yo, uh, when you go into a Mexican's house, you'll see uh, a butter, the butter container, and it's filled with something else. You know. Like, <laughs> so yeah. so just when you think you're gonna grab butter, it's like fucking uh, caldo or something. You know what I mean? Like what the fuck? You know, yeah. or like a container with the coffee. They will use that for the salsa. My mom uses my container for my coffee uh, and for the salsa. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Uh, Filipinos, we do that too with the cook, the cookie containers and cracker containers. We put like adobo and <laughs> all sorts of all sorts of food. Shit. So that's funny. So a lot of dope influence from the East Coast. And so, what was what was the specific moment that that had you wanting to start pinning rhymes? Do, do you recall? Was it a certain song or just somebody in general? So what started? I was thirteen years old. And like, I was just having, I say this in like almost every interview that um, that comes up. So when I was 13 years old, I was at my father's pad and I was going through a lot. I was a youngin and I didn't understand uh, why I went through so much as a kid. And so I started crying like literally to God and like, hey God, if you're here, I need you to tell me what my purpose is because I feel depressed, I feel angry, I feel all these types of things. I'm only 13 and it wasn't fair what I went through as a kid. So what do you want from me? What's the purpose of that? I need yeah. to know, because uh, if not, then I'm gonna go down a path of, of, of misery or self-destruction. And yeah. God revealed to me in a vision, I had a vision. And um, basically God passed me the mic and said, you know, your voice is gonna speak to the masses and help people. And yeah. you know, my, my God has a sense of humor. It's like, ha, you thought you went through a lot as a kid. Uh, nah, you're gonna go through way more as you get older, but don't worry, I'm here for you. And literally, uh, the next morning, I wrote my first rhyme. And uh, 
with that rhyme, I used it as a clutch to freestyle. So I would start off with that rhyme that I mesmerized and then I'll go transition into a freestyle and I started sharpening my freestyle skills and battling cats on the street too as well. Real but, quick, but you we, said vision yeah. in a dream. Uh, the friends pod said, uh, no, not a dream. I was awake and I went into a trance. I wasn't on drugs, no shrooms, no nothing. Um, I went into a trance and uh, it was a spiritual state and uh, God basically had a revelation for me that I needed to listen to. And that's because I asked, you know, yes. you ask, you shall receive. So I asked God, I said, I'm willing to accept you. Just let me know what it is that you need from me because yes. um, I don't know what to do, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that, that definitely puts you on the right path in terms of becoming an MC. So I love it. You know, I always ask this question to female MCs. Did you have any obstacles or major challenges in terms of becoming an MC as a female. I think in general, just uh, if you're fucking dope, you're dope, right? And you're good and that's how it should be, but it's not always like that. And so from your experiences uh, in, in becoming an MC, did you, did, you over, uh, did you have any challenges? Oh man, yeah, <laughs> I still do to this day. You wanna know something? Yeah. For the most part, it's mostly guys, not our boys. I won't say men, cause men can respect a queen when she enters the room, but yep. boys, they feel intimidated by a queen, right? Because they're not even a king in their own right. So they're like, oh, who does this think she is, right? So yeah. for me to this day, I always have issues with boys. Never so, uh, with never with women, really. I love my, I love, hey, yo, shout out to the women out there, you know what I mean? I love, I love, yes. I love y'all, you know? And I love my brothers and I love the <clears> men out there and the men in my life. And I have a lot of men in my life, um, such as my crew, MDR. And, um, so yeah, I run through a lot of conflict, uh, such as passive aggressiveness. Um, you know, uh, even there's been points of time where cats will put their hands on me because they lost a battle against Man. me. And, um, you know, and guess what? <laughs> I always fight back homie. you know, and, um, I'm not, I'm not one to surrender. The only, the only person or entity I should say I surrender to is God and God only, I don't surrender to no man, no woman, nothing. You know, so for me, I love that though. I'm not complaining. I love, yeah. I love that pressure. I love the yeah. animosity. I love it because I need it. I need that to feel, to feel my hard drive and to, for me to transmute it into my passion and my purpose. Right. Yeah. So, I love it. And my man on the chat room, he, he quotes a song that I wrote like 20 years ago, man. And he talks about just all the stuff that, that, uh, that, th that you think may hurt you or you use that and just use it to make you make yourself stronger. And, and I like that, that, you know, you just take all that and they use that as energy and just uh, use that to emanate positivity. So it's all good. So uh, haters will be haters and I agree with you boys are boys and freaking, uh, yeah, it's problem, man. Egos need to get checked. So, so with that, uh, what about <clears throat> your name? Right? So what you want to explain real quick for the folks listening, just your, uh, your, your uh, connection with Gangstar and how that name came about? Yeah, uh, rap is an art. You can't own no loops. It's how you hook them up in the rhyme style. So true. So don't even think you could say someone bit off of your weak beat. Come on, you need to quit. Oh, man. So that was good. Huh? That was the line, right? Yes, yeah, sir. So that came off of uh, Daily Operation album <laughs> by Gangstar. And the yeah. track, the single is called Take It Personal. That's and it. like, hey, we're talking about what we're talking about. These cats could take it personal. That's what happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, there's, there's, yeah. there's, it's, there's a thin line with inspiring somebody okay. or like what well, inspiration and hating. Yeah. I choose to be inspired. If someone's doing better than me, I'm yeah. like, damn, that's what's up. How can I get what they got? You know what I mean? I get in, so I, I, I surround myself with those cats. Like, hey man, like, you know, pick their brain. Like, so, you know, what, what is it? Like, who's your teacher? What books do you read? Who do you listen to? What podcasts yeah. do you listen to? What's your, yeah. what's your habits look like? You know? Yeah. And then cats don't know how to uh, be humble with yeah. inspiration. So they choose the egotistical route and, you know. Yeah. And I, and I wasn't sure when, when I first, you know, had started following you and following your music. Like I thought, and I knew, I was like, nah, I can't be because of Gangstar. And then as I noticed, you know, over the years, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just uh, Gangstar started making, uh, making more, uh, more uh, appearances in your feed. And so I was like, oh, God, it's got to be. So that's crazy. So I love it. Uh, it's, it, it yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it right hey, there. 
You see this right here, the hole in it? That's, this is the original promo record of this album. Oh, right uh, where would you find it? Did you get it online? Hell no, I didn't get it online. I found it in New York, baby. <laughs> hey, yo, shout, no. Hey, shout out, shout out to my boy K Boogie. He uh he uh told me, hey man, you gotta go hit up A1 Records. Uh-huh. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, bet, you know, and this uh-huh. is oh man, this is a gem, you know? So I was like, hell yeah, dude. This, you know, I I'm, I'm so happy to have this. Yeah. I already have I already have another copy. But this is a specific copy, right? This yeah, is the original absolutely. promo right here. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, and I love the I love the picture right behind you too. So super dope. Shout out to Guru, man. Rest in peace. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so with that, hey, what what's the significance? So I see six three seven always popping around too. What's the significance of six three seven? Six three seven is my crew. Okay. MBR. Making dreams reality. Must die rich. So I am honored and blessed to be the first uh female MC from my crew. Okay. Um, and these men, they're graffiti artists. And you okay. see that DPK in the background? Yeah, it's beautiful. So my boy Sire and Taste, they collaborated on this with DGK from MDR. So we're out here doing big shit like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that's why it's a blessing to be the MC aspect. Um, not that I'm yeah. the only one, because there's other cats in my crew who are MCs too. Um, yeah. So just to represent that real hip hop and MDR is like one of the biggest crews worldwide, not just yeah. in San Diego. I mean, if you go any city, you're going to see an MDR. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the entire crew's from uh, San Diego. Is that correct? Nah, we're worldwide. We got chapter. We got a, we got a chapter in Denver. Wow. Uh, we got chapters all over. So right now we're, we're always expanding, you know what I mean? And um, it's a blessing to be from six three seven. you know, if you break yeah. it down in, uh, in mathematics, you know, six is equality, yep. three is knowledge is understanding, and seven is God. With equality and understanding, you will know God, right? So you break down that number, yeah. you know, and, and uh, yeah, man, I study numerology and uh, philosophy and all that stuff. So that's why when I put that, that uh, the meaning behind the 637 in that way, I was like, oh, shit, you know, like yeah. equality understanding and God, like, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Cause we're all gods in my crew, you know, nothing less. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yo, I th- thanks for the uh, detailed breakdown on that. And so, and so you mentioned, you know, you, you're from uh, Southern California and I love the hip hop movement in the Southern California area, specifically LA, but I, I think you're from San Diego, correct? Yeah, San yep. Diego. Okay, cool. So what, 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 what's the scene like down in San Diego? Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about the scene and, how, how the networking is out there? So the graffiti scene is way more active than the MC scene. Okay. I'll put you like that. Yeah. Um, with with the scene out here, I'm already over it. So that's why I'm already uh, planning my next move and uh, going to New York with the New I York. I I saw that. Yeah. That, that's awesome. What, when yeah. is that happening? Within a year. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I saw you spend a little time out there and it was pretty amazing, all the things you got to do. I saw you rock a show, and then and you did a little bit of record shopping and sightseeing, so that was pretty awesome. Yeah, man, I just, I, I paid my dues here. Now it's time to pay dues everywhere else. I love hip hop. It, it's, it's always been here. Um, it's, yeah. of course, um, there was more, I will say this though. There was more, uh, you had to earn your keeps, I feel like more back then, you know, to rap. You know, you had to be original. A lot yeah. of cats are not original, they sound the same. And um, you had to really be about what you're talking about. You know, I feel like nowadays cats are moving backwards um, where they're, uh, they're doing, how do you say it? They get that rap money and then they're focused on the street life uh, more than their career. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's supposed to be the other way around. We're rapping to get out the hood, you know what I mean? To give back to the hood, um, not to stay in the hood and get killed. You know what I mean? And um, so it's just about unlearning and I feel like a lot of people are complacent, but, you know, instead of focusing on other people, I just focus on myself, you know, what yeah, is it that, that I'm complacent on, you know, so it is what it is. Hey, yo, peace. What up, uh, Joni from Brooklyn? Peace, peace. I love it. Well, hey, good. Thank you for that interesting perspective. And so, and so with that, I know I saw that you mentioned on social media one time that you feel like hip hop is a lifestyle. Can you just further expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I don't do this on the weekends. I do this in my sleep. I do this when I wake up. 
Yeah. I I walk, I live, I breathe hip hop. You know what I mean? Like it's it's in me and everything that I do. So what I mean by that too is like the way that I look at God is hip hop. The way that I help people is hip hop. The way that uh, I I sock a motherfucker in their face is hip hop. The way that I'll pray for somebody is hip hop. So to me, that's what I mean by it's a lifestyle. Uh, you live and you breathe this shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I this is what. <laughs> I mean, for me, I'll speak for me, like when I had nothing, I had all I had was hip hop. Yeah. And so I, I like, and I saw another previous interview too, where you mentioned that, you know, just, uh, you know, the life that you live, philosophy on reaching success uh, is definitely dependent on how you uh, handle yourself in un uncomfortable situations. So you got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to do things that make you, uh, you know, that are difficult, right? In order for you to uh, succeed. So. Um, you want to expand on that too as well a little bit? Yeah, that are difficult, like getting clean. Well, I guess uh, in, in whatever perspective, like, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like seriously, like getting clean, like looking at myself and my and my shit, like looking at my issues that I have, like really figuring out why I'm depressed, why I'm angry, like yeah. dealing with my diagnosis of bipolar, like uh, losing homies, like that shit, yeah, it's yeah. real, you know? And I talk about that stuff because um that's what makes me fall in love with art is the vulnerability part yeah. so i i willingly choose consciously choose to let it all out in the forefront you know of what i'm going through to an extent right um so for me being clean what that looks like is not doing drugs drinking alcohol it looks like going to my meetings. It looks like having a sponsor working the Narcotics Anonymous steps. It looks like um, being uncomfortable in the sense of having to deal with my with my negativity within my own self um, and asking for help from the right people and waking up and praying, which is my spiritual armor and yep. using my, my sword of truth, you know, which is my words. My words carry out vibration. I'm an MC with people. So our words, our prayer, our affirmations, yeah. our rhymes, they carry out a vibration. And it's only as good as the soul that is carrying that out. So for me, it's all about internal work, internal dialogue to reach the masses before I just word vomit, right? And say how dope I am all the time. That's so fucking boring on every track to just say how dope you are. So I choose to talk about different aspects of life um and i never want to be labeled that's one other reason why i always put that i'm a human before i'm an mc yeah. i'm a human i'm a human before i'm a songwriter i'm a human before i'm a case manager i'm a human before um x y and z you know so me being a human and being god's child always is going to come first and yeah. i'm a living testament and testimony to uh mental health diagnosis addiction and living this real hip-hop shit to the fullest and also to uh integrity and um putting it all in the forefront you know yeah no and i appreciate that about you too uh in, in terms of being an open book uh you're very open about everything that's going on and so it's just a good reminder that hey we're all human and we all we all aren't perfect right and i like it right you're not just doing braggadocio raps and you talk about different aspects of your life. So I appreciate that, you know, it's real and that's the, that's the reality of it. So I appreciate that. Um, so with that, I did a deep dive into a bunch of your music and I just wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff that you have put out. And so I wanted to start with your 2022 album, Cypher LP that, were, uh, that was produced by Manzu. And so can you, can you talk to me a little bit about what was going through your mind when you put that project together? Uh, with Cypher? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, wow. I was a wounded soldier. <laughs> I was a wounded soldier. Okay. I went through a battle internally and, uh, and I, I thank God that I overcame, I overcame it cause I almost felt like I wasn't. Um, and, uh, that's why after Cypher, the heart of the city was healing from that wounded soldier mentality and being already at a place of a childlike mindset you know like so for me um cypher was like a like a wounded soldier a soldier in the trenches where you know i had to find out my strength in the darkest times you know 
Yeah, and so that, and that, that's actually a good point. That really reminds me. I, I think this was the song where is that was that War of Art where the hook was I put my sword through the fire to raise to my raise my conscious fire. ire. Yeah. yeah. So that that actually kind of like summarizes for me what you had just mentioned. But but yeah, that was a uh, yeah pretty deep album. And so um, I had a couple favorites on that. One was uh, the Full Metal Jacket track. I oh, think probably my yeah. favorite song. That was super hard in terms of delivery. And then the wishing on a star sample. I was like, God damn, that's that's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Where, where's Monsby from? He is from Italy. Okay. Yeah, that was dope. And then the War of Art, which I just quoted the hook, I thought that was really dope too. Uh, very, uh, very, very emotional and drew me in uh, into into what you were saying. And then I, I thought the uh, the last track, which was super dope too, super banger, which was Solomon, uh, was also a good way to close that EP. So right on, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, that was really dope. All right. So with that, hey, I, I saw, you know, I, I dived in a little bit more and then I saw the song that you did uh, for the Snow Goons first of the month album, which I saw you got the plaque, one million streams, right? Really big thing. Super cool. And so you had the song Six of Wands. Can you, can you talk to me about when you were putting that song together, what was going through your mind? So the Six of Wands, what that means um, in the tarot uh, is triumph over the devil. So... <laughs> And there's a historical uh, reference behind the Six of Wands with uh, Egyptology, which is really comedic science of when Haru uh, was able to um, kill the devil, which the devil's name is set in Egypt. Um, yeah. And in regards to revenge for him killing his father, which is Osiris. Yeah. So um, it means triumph over the devil and wands is like, masculine energy it is your solar plexus chakra it is your passion your drive your motive to yep. life and um for me that's how i felt at the time i'm like i'm gonna name this track just to basically underline the intention which my intention is to win my intention is victory my intention is triumph over the devil and um so the six of wands that's my energy all day every day I could be in a negative standpoint, but one thing about me is I stay resilient and militant minded. I, I just can't give up. It's not in me. Yeah, I love it. And so, I mean, just the lyrics, right? Chestnut checkers. I applied the pressure. Uh, another whack MC got murdered tonight by yours truly. So I, I thought it was uh, just just quite deep in content. And so that was super dope. And so when, when you finished that track, how long before it actually uh, was put out? Was it, a, was it quite some time or did they get that album turned around pretty quick? So it, it took some time, not too long, but it took some time. Uh, so originally Snow Goons hit, hit me up two years ago on Thanksgiving Day and yeah. was like, hey, would you like to collab um, on this project we got? And I'm like, uh, yeah, like yeah, I, grew yeah. up listen I, I grew up listening to y'all. Let's do it. Yeah. So uh, they sent me the beat and I was thinking, you know, uh, sitting, sitting down with myself, thinking about the concept. And so the Six of Wands came about and then we ended up filming the video. I ended up filming it with uh, my brother, DJ Ordain, and then oh, sent it over to Snow Goons and they got their guy to edit and master it. Yeah, that's amazing. And so I, I didn't realize there was a video for it. I got to look it up, but um, just again, yeah, amazing feat, a million streams for that project. So it's gotta be awesome to be a part of that. And then working with some world-class producers like the Snow Goons, that's super dope. Man, they're good people. I'm blessed and honored to say that they're um, my friends mm. and they're my business partners in this, you know. Um, it's cool when you can just be, you can be direct with somebody and, and just get, like for me, working with them is such a pleasure because we just get straight to the point, you know what I mean, about things. Yeah. You know, boom, boom, boom. And then meeting them was a blessing. I got, I got a chance to meet um, DJ Illegal and Jenna. And oh, I met them. I met them in Philly. We went to go get a Philly cheesesteak. They took a picture of me. We're like, oh, I'm fucking eating the fucking Philly right there. They were like, yeah, yeah. Rock Style Trips first time. Yeah, because they, they always go to Philadelphia all the time. So, yeah. um, and they're a big Eagles fan. Um, even my, obviously my producers too, uh, the Dead Poet Society. So yeah, it was a blessing meeting them in the in the physical. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to build. And uh, yes. yeah, so they, they're the cats that like, they want to work with cats who already have something going on for themselves you know what i mean like yeah. no no dead weight and i'm the same way it's like you know no dead weight here like what are you doing with yourself like in order for me to invest in you you got to invest in yourself and that's another topic right of um 
of this industry in this game. You know, it's like people are going to either tell you your value or yeah. you're going to know your value. So you don't got to negotiate your value, you know? Yeah. So it's a living and learning experience for sure. Yeah. Is that, was that, so, um, that, that, uh, particular event, uh, so the invite, uh, into the uh, album that you were on for that, six, uh, for that song, six of wands, that, that was the first time that you uh, interacted with snow Goonson. That was the yes. uh, connection. Okay. So, well, good. Hey, so next, next single I jumped into was the rhyme style troop or the RST song that you did for uh, substance eight tens album making waves Two, And so that, that was a tribute to guru, right? And, uh, I thought that was super cool. Do you, do you want to explain why you did that particular verse or is it just that uh, what motivated you to do that? So basically substance hit me up and shout out my boy substance. One of the illest MCs. Um, he hit me up like, Hey, let's work. And I was like, yeah, shoot the track over. He shoot, he, he uh, sent the track and it was, it already had the cuts on it. And it so happens that the sample of the cut said, uh, rap is a gnar, you know, you can't ah, that's no line. Yeah. yeah, so so I was like, I, I hit him back up right away. I'm like, hey, fool, you know, I wanted to use this for my own single, for my own album. Uh, so if I do get on this track, there's one contingency. I need you to name it Rhyme Style Troop. That's cool. And, and he was like, and he was like, uh, at first he was like, all right, man, you know, I'll think about it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> all right. and, and I understand, you know, it's his yeah. project, you know, so yeah, I was sure. like, it's all good. I was like, hey, bro, but send me another track if you don't want to, like, let's still work, but I'm just letting you know, like, this is the sample I got my name from, so, like, it's going to be called Rhyme Style Troop. It is yeah. what it is. And uh, so, anyways, he was cool about it. He's like, yeah, I understand, fam. Let's just let's get it. And then, so, um, that's why, that's basically the story of uh, why it was dedicated, uh, dedication to Guru. Yeah, um, I like that. And so when, when he sent you the track with the sample, did, did he know or not know that you would flip your wig or just it just happened to be the sample that was for the track? It, okay, so n it's not like he told DJ Grasshopper like, hey, yeah, put yeah. that sample in. No, there was like no communication. DJ Grasshopper just happened to put that sample. Wow, that's that's even cooler. And so yeah, no. So there is no, you know what I mean? Like I didn't flip my wig or anything like that. I just, I just, I'm a very blunt person. When you work with me, I'm going to tell you what it is because that's how I want people to, to be with me. Like a lot of cats yeah, yeah. are scared of, 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 uh, intense intensity. And I think that's funny because, um, uh, aren't we in hip hop? Like, aren't you from the streets? There's nothing but intensity and in, like, you know, business. <laughs> and, and, and so now, nah, yeah. So me and Substance, we did our thing on there, and DJ Grasshopper did his thing too. And uh, shout out to the producer too as well. So yeah, I'm very proud of that. I'm actually waiting for my record to come in the mail so I could put it up here. Very cool. Well, good. Now I want to jump into uh, the, the album that you had just mentioned uh, a little bit earlier. So you just released the Heart of the City that came out on digital and vinyl. I, I love the color scheme that you use for it, and just uh, the cover art super dope. And so that you released that on your birthday, right? September 29, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, and, and you did that project with the Dead Poet Society. Boom, there it is right there. Uh, super cool. So do you, you want to talk a little bit just about the making of that project, what was going on, and uh, just what, what you had in your mind as you were putting that together? Yeah, so um, with the Heart of the City, as soon as I heard uh, the Dead Poets production, I said, man, I need that sound for my next album. I just need it. I need it. So uh, we ended up uh, working uh, very quickly. They ended up s sending a bunch of beats and I would correspond with them like, hey, not this one, this one or whatever. Yeah. And um, I was just knocking out recordings and recordings. They're like, fuck it, let's do an LP, you know, 12 songs. Oh, and cool. uh, so then uh, we just started building a rapport with each other too, behind the scenes as in not just talking about music, but about each other yes. uh, and, and what we're going through and what we've been through and all that and where we want to go. And so it was cool. It was an instant connection. It was an instant, you know, um, brother brotherhood, you know? So I was like, hell yeah, this made me feel more better about the album. So it was a really cool space that I was in making this album. I'll say it was way more positive than the, the cipher uh album as in terms gotcha. of where i where i was at uh, in, uh internally yeah and so and then the big wait is always waiting for the vinyl right it always takes a couple months before uh before you can actually get the project out and so that was a really cool project that i enjoyed and uh you went to philly right to record uh, some videos in support of that album too saturn return uh which uh, also features the amazing d styles on that too as well um Tell me about putting that video together, man. It looked really fun. 
So it was right after the in-store, uh, the meet and greet that we had at Philly. Um, and uh, we were just outside fucking around, finding out, walking around the streets of Philly, and we were just filming it. It was like very on the spot like it was like okay after the the end store okay work you know and then boom 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 but it's not it doesn't feel like that it just that's why i know i'm in the right industry because i want to do this shit for, like all this time you know what i mean so like that that type of work for me is not work it's my passion so it doesn't like it doesn't phase me whereas you know a regular joe nine to five or whatever you know like so that's where i'm at right now you know in my career is yeah what's next how can i climb the next mountain because i'm on top of this mountain and it doesn't feel that good anymore like my me finishing this album don't get me wrong it's a blessing i'm happy about it but i'm already on what's next you know yeah no i hear you and i love the passion and i can tell as we you know just continue to get further and further in this interview and i love it and um and that song too sad in return the intro time is an illusion the biggest lie we can tell ourselves is we have time I, yeah, I, I agree 100%. Time is short, and so you got to get it out when you can, right? And then reflection. Did you get, Did you shoot that in Philly, too, or no? No, nah, that was here in downtown San Diego at Fillet Records, and also, too, in the corner outside of Pokies. Okay, that was which fun, is a, too. Yeah, it yeah. was in the record shop, and then uh, I think it was like a barbecue or something going on outside, but... Uh, oh, that was a. <laughs> it looked like a barbecue, but it was a, it was a tableless session, so... Oh, tableless, oh, okay. shot, Shout out to my boys, Needle Ninjas, Table of Slam, San Diego, and yeah. Scratcher SD. They're all out there doing their thing. Yeah, and then uh, the pencil fighting scene at the end was pretty funny, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that old school shit, yeah. Yeah, so it's good. Uh, and then just video work is fun, too. Um, we talked about the rock one that you did already uh, that featured Papa Roach and DJ Lord. So I love that you got uh, visuals coming out, too, in addition to music. So super dope. Uh, have you tried anything? Have you tried production or any any other a other aspect of hip hop? Uh, I know you tried dancing, like you mentioned earlier on. Uh, in your <laughs> when I was a kid. Any anything else? Yeah, so I messed around a little bit here and there with scratching, and okay. uh, so? right now, right now I'm I'm uh, learning how to hit up my name, uh, Troop T R O O P, yeah. and uh, so you know, there's always something new to come to the table that piques my interest, and I'll just go with it. But um, what I'm dedicated towards right now is the the MC aspect. That's where my dedication and my investment is really going into. I love it. Well, good. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's an exciting ride, and I, I'm enjoying everything that I'm saying. Is it for you to see females representing hip-hop? Is it something you don't consider? It just, you know, it should be just whoever, whatever, or is that an important thing that, that, uh, that you think about? I raised the bar for for uh, a female MC, so I expect the same for every other female MC. Um, yeah. You know, it's not don't just rap about your pussy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a straight and simple. Um, I'm all about female empowerment, but I'm more about human empowerment. I'm not a fucking feminist. Like if you're a dope MC, you're a dope MC. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, awesome to hear. And so, um, and, and then, but um, you know, being a female, do you have younger female MCs that reach out to you just for any sort of mentorship or just advice? How often does that happen? Um, it happens here and there, and you know, it's it's always a blessing to connect with dope women in yeah. hip hop, whether they're MCs or DJs or graffiti artists. You know, like. Uh, it's just it's so dope because I'm like, yeah, you know, you're a queen, you know, a queen recognizes a queen and it's always respect and love and honor, you know, yeah. I like I said, inspiration or hating. For me, I stay inspired by those who, who uh, have their own thing going on and they're being yeah. successful in, in, and um, in the lane that they're producing on, you know, so, so yeah, you know, working with uh, other dope females in the game is always a blessing because it's a reflection of of each other you know of um the adversaries uh that we had to go through yeah and shit like that oh no, that's awesome all right so yeah you already mentioned and you keyed in on that you you love performing and so uh before you perform do you have any uh just pre-stage rituals or things you do or do not do before you get on stage or is it uh just ready to go at all times well practice 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 all day i love it i don't 
I don't rap over my vocals. I think that's whack. Yeah. Um, I pray. Prayer is so important. Yeah. I pray before, uh, before anything, you know, especially with the performance, because my whole thing is to, to um, connect with the audience on a spiritual level through my artistry. So in order to do that, I got to call in my higher power to yeah. move through me. You know, I'm just a vessel. And uh, I always call on to God to just move through me and uh, help me to be uh, as vulnerable and as, as uh, effective and um, skillful and tactical as possible, you know, and just execute. So my whole thing is about executing, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I love it. And so I've seen you perform all around the United States. Have you done any shows overseas yet? Um, if not, I'll see it coming in your future. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, New York was uh, the first time I even flew a plane was to go to New York. Oh, wow. Just recently. Yeah, yeah that's that's that was awesome. recent. Yeah, so, you know, and um, yeah, that's where I'm headed at now is worldwide, you know, so yeah. um, I'm ready to go to Japan. Germany, yeah, New York, wherever hip hop's calling me, I'm there. Yeah, I love it. You're killing the scene right now, and just uh, you're setting the stage on fire. So I love it. Um, so with that, I, I expect that to happen in the near future. Um, so with that, uh, you know, talk a lot about music. Thank you for all the background. Now I want to move to more just kind of uh, you know personal touch with this interview. So in terms of when you're not making music, what what do you like to do for fun? Kick it with the homies, do hood rat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a lifestyle. So just cause if I'm not in the booth, best believe I'm still around hip hop, you know, yeah. and I'm, I work a full time job. Yeah. Um, yeah. I go to my meetings. My recovery comes first or else none of this will happen, you know. Yeah. So oh, my mental health comes first or else none of this will be able to transpire and such so forth. So I just stay active in, in every way possible, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, musically, and all that, because it all, it all fills that, that cup, which is me, my soul. Yeah, I, I love it. So you got, you got to take care of yourself and that's number one. So awesome. So thanks for sharing that. And then, all right, let's go. Let's see what kind of personality you have. What's your favorite comedy movie of all time? <laughs> Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Okay. All right. Yeah, you're about that that time. Mine is Coming to America, but that's the old movie. So, <laughs> all right. Good. All right. Uh, hey, what, what's uh, an in interesting uh, interesting thing about Ron Style True that not too many people know about? I'm an astrologer and tarot card reader. Yeah, I did it. So that that's cool. When you uh, told me about Six of Wands, I was like, does she do it a little bit? But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is awesome. And how long have yeah. you been doing that for? Since I was 19. So, oh, for a minute, yeah. Yeah, so for a while. Um, I have a, a page, a totally different page. It's called Nubia Styles Readings, and that's where um, did not know I do that. that. Yeah, that's where I do that stuff with, you know, um, yeah, it goes, it's a double-edged sword. Got my spirituality and then I got, you know, my skills and technique, but it's only as good as my spirituality. So just balance and balance them both knowledge yourself, obtain it any way possible. Yeah, I love it. All right, let's see. Uh, so I, I won't take the beginning of the interview for granted. Uh, so what about favorite food? Is it, is it Mexican or is there something else? Italian. What's that? Italian. Oh, okay. All right. Any any particular dish? Spaghetti oh, and meatballs. Hey. <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's uh, literally like I, okay. I I can eat spaghetti all day every day. That's my favorite food. Um, all right, but uh, so y'all got a lot of Filipinos in San Diego. Do you eat Filipino spaghetti? What do you mean, like ponce? Is that well, it's, it's a little sweet? It's a little sweeter than uh, regular spaghetti. They use like banana ketchup. And then we put hot dogs in our spaghetti, man. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you tried Filipino spaghetti yet or not, but oh, I've had hot dogs in my spaghetti. I've, I've, yeah, that's that's get, that's the ghetto fab shit. You know, what I mean? <laughs> the 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 spaghetti on the hot dog bun too. Shit, we had all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, all right. So we crossed lines. Good. All right. With that, um, all right. So tattoo, right? I love tattoos. I know you got a lot. Um, I love the Gangstar logo tat that you had on your left knee and then the Wu-Tang Doom mask on the left leg. 
Uh, any, any, well, obviously significance to uh, those who have influenced you, but uh, is that, are those one of your favorite tattoos or do you have another piece that, that you enjoy? Um, yeah, I love the, the piece that I got on my arm with the goddess Ma'at. Um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite. Yo, peace, peace, MC peace. Wicks is in the building. Wicks. What up, man? Uh. Yeah, um, so that that's uh, one of my favorite tattoos and I'm gonna keep getting more. Just yeah. not on my face, not on my face. <laughs> no, the Gangstar one was pretty cool. All right, cool. With that, with that um, do you want to just highlight any special projects that you got going on right now that you want folks to know about? I got singles in the tuck, let's put it that way. You know, certain artists, uh, I, I can't mention it yet, but um, I got singles in the tuck and I'm already strategizing on my next album. And um, yeah, to be continued. I love it. All right, before we close this amazing interview out, uh, do you want to tell folks where the best place to find your music is on all digital streaming platforms? Or you got a spot that you want people to go to? All, all digital streaming platforms. You know, eventually I want to go to an independent platform where I collect all the dough, right? That's the goal as an artist, you know, fuck Spotify. Um, but you can catch me at my uh, direct link. It's on my uh, page, rhymestyletroop.com. And yeah. everything you need to know about what's going on with me is um, on my website. Yeah, can they pick up the new vinyl on there too? Yeah, if you go to that uh, website on the first page, it's gonna give you a link to, um, it'll redirect it to the goonsgear.com and then you can purchase the vinyl there. Very cool, support dope hip hop. Well, with that, yeah, I told you time and time throughout this interview, you're a dope, ferocious MC on the mic. Um, you're taking the game by storm. I can't wait for you to expand, not only within the United States, but outside of that. I see that really coming in your future. Keep killing it. I look forward to all your uh, projects and just continue to follow your work. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you making this time to do this. Hey, thank you too, bro. It was a pleasure. <laughs>